Good morning, Internet! What's going on, peoples of Kansas City? I'm here representing the smugglers today as I explain to all y'all chillins out there how to War Thunder. You don't know how to War Thunder? Don't worry, kids. I was you once. I can totally sympathize. Alright, so you just finished the first tutorial, and you're here, and it's like, um, I got three biplanes in my lineup, and I don't know what's going on. It's okay, chillins. The first thing that you need to know about War Thunder is the battle rating system. Now you see all these numbers here below all these airplanes, you're like, I don't know what that numbers, man, there's too many numbers. It's okay. Three deep breaths, just in and out. Okay, battle ratings are how you get ranked amongst other players. So if you were to click this glorious orange glowing button of awesomeness here, that'll take you to a battle. What that does is that groups you in with other players. Now, any aircraft you start off with originally is going to be a battle rating of 1.0. Now, what that means in terms of how you get grouped with other players is battle rating of 1.0 is um, how it works. Okay, here's how it works. Listen up. Take notes. It's going to be a quiz letter. Uh, so, your lineup, the highest battle rating in your lineup, which is basically like your aircraft in this bar on the bottom, that's your lineup. The highest battle rating in your lineup uh, is going to be grouped in with a match of other players whose average battle rating can be 1.0 higher or 1.0 lower than your lineup. So the average battle rating. So, it, you could... Theoretically, with 1.0, you could get grouped in with aircraft that are up to 2.0. So that's how that works. Or at least you could get grouped in to a match where the average is 2.0. Correction there. So that's how battle ratings work. The second thing you need to know about War Thunder is it provides a rainbow of airplanes to choose from. You got a bunch of little aircrafts here in every every country, but it basically boils down to three types. You got your attackers, which are typically pretty fast moving. They got a lot of heavy guns, and they can fight both uh, fighters and ground targets, but they're mainly only used for ground targets, and they're not very good at turning, so people don't really like to use them in dogfights, especially in the higher tiers when things start becoming more specific. Next you have your bombers, and this is kind of your, whatever you think about bombers. I mean, they're multi-engine, they're crewed by a lot of people, and they got some turrets in there to fight off those pesky little fighters. And, finally, last but definitely not least, oh baby, we <laughs> got your fighters. These are the fast turning and burning maverick and goose type aircraft where you go, danger zone, all day, just like, oh yeah, just, just get in there real good. <laughs> Oh, yes, I love fighters. <laughs> I love them so much. Chugga 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 chugga. Oh, chugga 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 chugga. Mmm, is it getting nice and toasty and then Mr. P20? Okay, to be fair, I'm kind of biased, because if you look at all my countries, all I really use are fighters. Not a whole lot else going on here, you know what I'm saying. Hope you got shirts, baby! <laughs> yeah, whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so anyway, if you want to check out the uh, uh, what the different countries are, what I think about every country, the strengths and weaknesses of each country, check out part two of this video. The rest of part one here is just for people who are just starting out. Uh, they don't know how to make a lineup. They don't know all about the uh, different ways you can spend Golden Eagles. So if you want to see my personal preferences and strengths and weaknesses of every country that I've analyzed, click on part two. Ha 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 ha. That wasn't very funny, was it? One thing all War Thunder players have in common, they're always researching something. So to change what you're researching on, just go here and hit research. It'll, uh, yeah, there we go. Alright, so now I'm researching that. So every time I fly, every time I get experience with this certain country, I'll always be contributing towards that one aircraft. And when that research is done, you can buy it with Silver Lions and then add it to your lineup. They see me rolling. They hate in. All right, now another really important thing you're gonna want to know here is uh, your lineup. See, so, uh, every country is gonna have three slots in its lineup, and you can actually get more slots by hitting this button right here. The recruit a new crew. It'll cost you ten thousand lines. You might want to do a couple matches uh, with just three before you do it. But the great part about having a larger lineup is uh, once you die three times in arcade battles, I mean you get rid of all of these airplanes by doing probably something pretty stupid, um, once you get rid of all of those three aircraft, you can't spawn in anymore, so you're kinda done. But if you have five slots, like I would actually recommend five slots, 
uh, once you have five slots, you can technically die five times. Some matches will only let you die three times, other matches will let you die five times. So that's another important thing uh, to think about right there. Also, uh, see so the first slot costs 10,000, you saw back in the British, and this slot costs 50,000 lions. And after that, they start having to use golden eagles, and that's a premium currency, and it's, you, know, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Hi, my name is what? My name is who? My name Chick Chick Kansas City. One of the more important things that you need to think about when you're uh, researching a bunch of aircraft and you start getting a bunch of research is making a balanced lineup. Now, if you look at all of my lineups, they're all fairly in the same range in terms of battle rating. Even once you once you get up higher, they're all sort of in the same range. Now, that's because you have to think about when uh, Gaijin is going to group you in a certain battle, you remember what I said, they're going to take the highest battle rating and they're going to put that into a list of other battle ratings and it's going to be the, the average, is going to be one up or one below your highest battle rating in a certain lineup. So you're going to want to make a balanced lineup, meaning you're going to want all of your aircraft to be relatively close in terms of what battle rating they are. And that's why battle ratings are just so important and also organizing your lineups in a certain way is really important. Uh, once you get up higher and you get more aircraft, you're going to want to make new lineups. What you do here is you just go in the pre uh, presets and you just add a new lineup by creating a new preset. And then you hit apply and you'll just get, um, it's actually, it always serves, it always puts just one aircraft in there and you add whatever aircraft you need. Uh, creating presets do, does cost a lot of eagles uh, if you're going to create a whole new preset, so I guess just be wary of that. Um, also, what I said before, this is why some of these aircraft have golden eagle, uh, <laughs> golden silver lions on them and some aircraft don't, is if you've already equipped this aircraft to this particular slot, it's actually that particular crew. Um, you don't need to pay for them anymore because technically that crew already knows how to fly that aircraft. So that's why some of these have... You have to pay to get them in here, and some of these you don't. So if you if you do it really smart-like, I don't really do it all that smart-like, but if you do do it really smart-like, you can put the aircraft in there all for free. So that's what that's all about. I wanna hold your hand. Oh, yeah. So what are Golden Eagles? All right, Golden Eagles is War Thunder's premium currency. Now, if you look up here, I don't have any right now, but... Uh, Golden Eagles, you buy them with real money, and they can really speed up your research. You can buy premium aircraft. You can do a lot of stuff. I'm not going to tell you how to buy it because it's pretty self-explanatory, to be honest. You just feed money and Eagles come out. But uh, one of two things can happen with Golden Eagles. The first thing that can happen with Golden Eagles is you can buy premium aircraft. That's a fun thing. Now, premium aircraft are special. They're better than normal aircraft because if you look here, you see it? Yeah. It's 212% research points. Now what that means is that every time you fly, you get 100% more research points than you would if you flew with a uh, normal aircraft, a non-premium aircraft. And of course, the higher you go, look at that, the more research you get. It's pretty, uh, pretty dank. Everybody do the flop. Now, Golden Eagles is a premium currency, which means you don't technically need it to play the game. You actually can just use the regular currency and if you have a lot of time and a lot of Red Mountain Dew on your hands. You can get pretty far before the game starts becoming extremely cringy, at which point you might want to consider it. Dun 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 dun. Another one, but dun. Oh. I want your lip. Right, so the other thing you can use Golden Eagles for is to boost your research on your current aircraft that uh, you are researching. So to do that, you just go in here, up here, you click on the aircraft you're researching, and you hit boost research. Now, the yellow balloon thingy there is convertible RP. Now, you earn that every single round along with normal RP. Now, what you do to convert your RP into normal RP, which would boost research on your current aircraft, what you do is it costs a certain amount of Golden Eagles. So, um, yeah, you just have the slider and you hit boost research. Those are the only two things that I would honestly recommend that you use your Golden Eagles on because they actually uh, help you with your progress in-game and they actually speed things along a lot faster if you... Um, if you're really into uh, advancing more in the game. Now listen up class, I'd like you to give a big hello to our guest speaker today, I-16. 
He's here to steal all your souls. Yeah, no, it's getting a little toasty in here, man. It's a little too toasty. And one more important thing before you get started that uh, I believe makes War Thunder way worthwhile is customization of your aircraft. So you go in here for the customization and uh, you come up with this. Now, some aircraft will have other camouflages like this. I mean, this one's one of the more ridiculous ones. But camouflages, other camouflages, can be bought with Golden Eagles, as you can see here, which, of course, I don't have enough for right now. Um, but that's, I mean... It's more of an aesthetic thing. I can totally sympathize with people that value aesthetics over everything else because I totally do. Um, but yeah, let's get it on. So here you'll see that two of the logos here are blanked out. Now, you need a premium account if you're going to want to uh, put four emblems on your aircraft. But for free, standard account, you can put two emblems on your aircraft. Uh, you can see that I put my OGC Dragon on all my airplanes because I am the OGC Dragon Master. I'm the Master of OGC Dragons, so I put them on my airplanes. Travelers tell tales of a Sea Dragon Master so old, he predates all the other Sea Dragon Masters. They call him... The OG Sea Dragon Master. Whoop, whoop! That's the sound of the police. Whoop, whoop! That's the sound of the beast. Whoop! One really quick note about camouflages, there are some aircraft in the game that don't have any camouflages that you can buy with Golden Eagles and add on. And then you suddenly happen upon aircraft like this I-16 Type 5, which has so many different skins, you're like, oh my god, whoa, look at that, oh my god, look at these aesthetics, baby, oh my god, look at these aesthetics, it's like, it's like Saturday Night Fever, so many aesthetics, and it's, it's an aesthetic overload, it's overloaded on those aesthetics, it's aesthetic fever on a Saturday night, oh my god. They see me rolling. Yeah, you can't kill me, I'm already dead, I am. Now, if you're really into War Thunder and you, you played it for a bit on the free mode and you really like it, what you can do is get a premium account. What you do is you go up here to activate your premium account. And um, you, you activate your premium account with Golden Eagles, and Golden Eagles are bought with real money. I don't know if you can eliminate the middleman and just buy a premium account for a certain amount of time. Uh, but that's really not important. The important thing is premium accounts do the same thing that premium airplanes do in that... They grant you, I think it was 100%, maybe higher, of your uh, research and your um, Golden Eagles, meaning you get twice as much research and twice as many Golden Eagles per round. And that is pretty powerful stuff. Also, another thing you can do, like me if you're a scrub, is um, like if you only play weekends, you can get a premium account for just a couple days, which you can see in here. There's like one day, and then you can just start insanely grinding that one day until you rack up enough research points to maybe get to that next aircraft. That is more of a, a strategy once you get to the higher tiers, like uh, tier 4 in your research tree. Hello, my good sir. How is it slouching today? Oh my, quite good. Yes, I do agree. Yes. Hey, buddy, how you doing? Ah, uh, what? Uh, I just wanted to talk. But anyways, I digress. Back to the whole round thing. So, uh, once you've played for a while on your reserves and you've bought like a slot or two and you want to add in some new aircraft, uh, there are two things you can do to add in new aircraft to your lineup. One is you can just add it into the slot like that. Every uh, aircraft you add is going to cost some lions to add, but once you uh, add them in there with the lions, you're never going to have to pay to add that aircraft in that particular slot again. But if you want to add it into a different slot, um, you're going to need to you're going to need to basically just pay all over again. Which um, you, the the way to prevent that is just keep track of which aircraft you put where. The other way you can do that is just click on one of your existing aircraft, go to change vehicle, and um, add that particular aircraft into whatever slot you want. Oh, crikey, it's an HG-112! Alright, and one last thing that every War Thunder Flyer should know about is how to modify their crew. Now, if you go to crew here and you've been flying for a while, you can hit this crew thing and you can adjust whatever, um, whatever kind of skills you want. So you want the the play, or pilot of the aircraft to look further. You can do keen vision. Uh, personally, this is my personal preference, G tolerance is one of the most important things in War Thunder that your pilots can be trained for. Because if your um, 
if you like me and you really like to turn and burn, you're going to want G-tolerance more than anything else because that keeps the pilot from blacking out. And if you've been flying for a while, you know that if you black out in the middle of a dogfight, you will most likely die, unless the other guy is like an idiot, of course. So what you do is you just do that, and it'll spend some of these crew level points that you gain through experience in that aircraft. I'm not 100% sure how Gaijin calculates that, but you just hit apply, and it's all good. Um, I'm not really super into the whole crew thing except G tolerance. I believe personally G tolerance is very important. But you can do whatever you want. I don't control your war thunder thingy. But that's how you do that. The I-15 waits patiently for its prey to make a stupid mistake. Then he pounces with all his all his machine guns and then he kills it. And then he goes down to eat the corpse. Another important thing about playing War Thunder is making sure all your airplanes are up to date. So if you go up to this cheeky tab here, Modifications, you can see what your plane has and what it doesn't. Now after every battle, each plane not only uh, makes helps you research your next uh, the next highest airplane, it also researches modifications that make the plane you're flying better. Now there are some premium modifications like um, Tailsman and backup vehicle are two common ones. Backup vehicle basically means that once you die in that airplane, you can fly it again, the same airplane. I guess it helps if you're really raring for something special. But these are the real modifications you really need to worry about. Um, sometimes they're as inconsequential as like a slightly better engine. It'll yeah, show you the stats. But sometimes it's really important, and especially me. Like I play German fighters, it's really important when uh, sometimes you can get like extra actual weapons for your aircraft. For instance, for starting at the BF 109 F4, you can actually get two extra cannons that aren't on there in the normal model. So here's the F4 Trop, and if you see those two underslung cannons under the wings, those aren't in the normal model. You can only get those with a modification. And it's also true with a lot of other German aircraft. Here's the F4 with some cannons there, a bit hard to see because of the skin. Um, and it even happens on the FW-190, although I don't have them unlocked on the A5U4, uh, A5U2 rather, quite yet. But nonetheless, modifications are really important if you see in here. There's the R1 modification. Also, another thing that's important if you're playing as attackers or bombers, modifications will also help you rank up in what droppable munitions you can use. That's uh, probably a more important uh, aspect about modifications. Oh, look at him go! Insert clever quip here. He's on fire now! <laughs> Alright, chillins, one last thing before we bounce. If you've seen today's video, you might l see that a lot of the airplanes don't exactly look as advertised. That's because there are custom skins on a lot of my airplanes. I finally figured it out after about three years of trying. So if you want to see more of those skins, check out our videos. If you want to learn how to put these skins on your aircraft, leave a request in the comments below. If I do get enough requests, on this video in the comments, I will make a video on how to put these custom skins on your aircraft. It's really fun. Uh, the thing about custom skins, no one else can see them, but you can see them. It makes you feel warm and fuzzy inside. Without further ado, people, this is Kansas City. Thank you so much for seeing our How To War Thunder video here at the Smugglers. I'll be seeing you out there in the skies of War Thunder. Stay classy, Internet. This is Kansas City. Goodbye, Internet.